Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting your day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. Key West is a community connected to the ocean. It's obviously all around us. It's planted in the hearts and souls of those who were born and raised here in the Keys. My guest today, Will Benson, he is a native of the Florida Keys. He's also a full-time fishing guide. He has dedicated his life to being on the ocean and fishing for a living. Along with being a fishing guide, he's also a writer, a photographer, and a filmmaker. Now this morning, his love and passion for what he does in the ocean will shine through on camera. I'm also going to show his latest short film, which is entitled The Silver Lining. Now this is about an issue that is very important to Will. It's also an issue that could have a very big impact down here in Monroe County. Well, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, it's great having you, Will. And as I mentioned to everyone, you are a native of the Keys. So you were born and raised here, and you've spent your life on the water, haven't you? It all started out right here on Stock Island. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good place. It's a good place to have beginnings happen. <laughs> yeah, actual saltwater conch. Yeah, and I've mm -hmm. lived here uh, for the most of my life. I went away to school, obviously, studied philosophy, came back, but I knew a long time ago that the, the ocean was what I loved. Uh, I love being out there. I love having a family and taking them out there and getting that ability to share uh, that experience with clients, with friends, uh, with my little girl now who's one. So uh -oh. it's a really uh, a special place and I feel blessed to have been able to grow up here. And I, it's kind of the reason why I feel a little bit uh, of a need to be a voice you know, for the community uh, and as an ambassador for, you know, the environment and the ecosystem that I'm so privileged to get, you know, to be a part of every day. Mm -hmm. Well, you do. You have such a passion for it, obviously, Will. So it is important for you to be that voice to all of those who share that same passion. Do you remember when you got your first fishing pole, Will? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think the first fishing pole um, was probably just borrowed and, and out on our friends. We had a, uh, some friends who owned a trimaran sailboat that we used to go sailing, uh, you know, out to the fort, to Fort Jefferson uh, when we were kids. The thing I do remember is getting my first boat. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, admiral Mauer, who lived on Kudjo Key, who was a retired Navy admiral, uh, took me under his wing and gave me an old aluminum boat and told me, you know, I could. Uh, have the boat, but I had to promise, you know, to, to, to be a good captain and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. And and so we at first we rode it to the end of the canal, my brother and I did, and we would camp out overnight, you know, at the end of the canal um, it, until the leak started springing up in the bottom of the aluminum canoe, and then the thing would fill with water, and so we'd have to row back, you know, at 10 o'clock in the morning. And of course, my parents knew that that would happen, <laughs> and so we weren't in any danger of actually staying out on the water overnight and I think I was uh, you know 10 years old at the time and my brother and I saved up for our first outboard engine uh, it was used in the citizen and we got it for four hundred dollars and that just took everything to a whole nother level we could get outside of our immediate canal system uh, and go explore you know the back country in the bays and uh, I would just spend hours and hours and hours uh, out there running around you know until sunset just you know it, it just loving it every bit of it and uh, you know, take my family out there and I always, no dad, I'm driving the boat, you know, <laughs> you don't know where you're going kind of stuff. <laughs> always been a, a captain, I guess, in Aww. that sense. But, but yeah, so I remember those, those images fondly and it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's just really exciting now that I'm, you know, a dad and, and going to possibly have those experiences with my family. I, it's mm -hmm. just thrilling. I think about it a lot. That's awesome, Will. And now, do you do all types of fishing, Will, or is there a specialty that you do? Well, I you know, do all types of fishing, I mm -hmm. guess, uh, but I've, over the years, kind of refined and honed my craft to really be uh, fly fishing for tarpon and for permit, uh, mm -hmm. two of the most difficult fish to catch, really highly prized game fish. And uh, I'm really good at teaching folks how to fly fish and getting them to achieve that trophy, that that goal that they have in life uh, of catching a, a you know a permit or a tarpon on fly. Um, and folks come down here and, and fish with me for a number of days. Uh, a lot of them come down multiple times throughout the year, you know, and fish for a week each time. So you kind of develop a friendship, clientele, if you will, 
of, of guys that you know come down here, uh, kind of make their lives down here in a certain sense, vacationing down here, bringing the families down here, renting houses, staying in hotels, eating out at restaurants. Uh, and so that's really my my focus is is in that flats fishing fly fishing world. But that being said, if if there's somebody going off to the to the reef, mm -hmm. and uh, there's an opening and I have the day off, I'm I'm totally at home <laughs> doing that too. Doing anything else? <laughs> yeah, spear fishing in the summertime. Mm -hmm. You know, diving for lobsters, doing all that kind of stuff is just you know part and parcel of growing up here and and what we do on our days off as well. Great. Well, Will, we're going to take a quick break right now, but when we return, you're going to talk with us about the ties that tarpon fishing have to the island, along with talking about your film, The Silver Lining. So stay with us, everybody. There is much more to come this morning.